who stopped over today, my good buddy Steve Antonucci came over. He wants to make an axe handle. And uh, hey, let me show you something. Steve's been a long time member of the New Jersey Wood Turners and he dropped off some of his tops. These are best sellers. And these are for our fundraiser that we're having this month. And this is the uh, other inventory that we have. But uh, for now today, we're gonna talk about building an axe handle. Okay, Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about the project that you wanna to do today? Yeah, so we've got uh, Spoon Camp coming up in three weeks. And uh, just the other day, I noticed that the uh, tree guys came through and cleared out a bunch of, of uh, logs up in the lake. And lo and behold, came across some really, really nice hickory, tight grain, perfect for axe handles. So uh, reached out to the group and said, hey, does anybody feel like making axe handles? And I got a whole bunch of yeses. So uh, when we're there, we'll, we'll be doing it with just a draw knife and, and an axe. And you know, we're gonna show you a little bit of that today. Uh, we might cheat a little and use the bandsaw to save some time, but that'll be, uh, that'll be today's project. Okay, so what, tell me more about um, Spoon Camp. Yeah, Spoon Camp is a, uh, it's a free event. Um, we, we have use of a camp and beds and toilets and all the, the fun stuff that goes with it. Uh, and we get together for three days doing a bunch of green woodworking. Um, it's, uh, it's based off of uh, a couple of spoon events. And uh, it's just a great way to kind of build community and get people together and out of the house and working together. Well, you've got a website, right? We do, yeah. It's the uh, spooncampnj.wordpress.com. Uh, the event is on the 28th, goes to May 1st. It's, uh, it's free. And, you know, if you have any interest, you can come for a day or an hour or the whole thing if you want. If I remember right, this is the third year? Uh, it's the second year, third event. Okay. After the first event, the uh, attendees looked at me and said, well, we're going to do this again. I said, yeah, you know, next year. And they were like, well, why wouldn't we do one in the fall? Mm -hmm. So we called the camp, and they were like, yeah, come on back. You guys are great. And what town is it in? Uh, it's in West Milford. West Milford, New at, Jersey. At Camp Vacamas. Okay. Uh, but you can get all of that off the website, and uh, it's a good time. All right, good. All right, let's get into the axe handle. Sure. So um, when we split out of the log, everything is done with axes. And, you know, we we look for going across the, the grain quarter sawn. This is a little bit thick for a, an axe handle, but we'll take care of that with a draw knife and an axe. So, you know, my... In the field, we're only going to have access to non-power tools. So the other day, I, I was sitting there saying, well, you know, better make sure we can do this. So we'll walk you over to the bench. So we're at the bench here. Um, typically, we're going to work at a stump, but we've traced out a pattern, which I actually drew from another axe. And this is a good carving length. Overall, it's about 15 inches. But, you know, working at a stump, we can waste off material. How, how old is this piece of wood? This is fresh, right? Yeah, this wood is very, very green. Um, the tree was probably cut maybe within the last two months, and it's just been laying in the woods. So for now, all I'm trying to do is work close to the line. Yep. Because I'll do the final cuts with the draw knife. So like any woodworking, um, we work with the grain. So we're gonna need to flip this over. And 
and start working out that arch. Okay, just for the sake of the video quality so the viewers can see what we're doing, we made the pencil line a little bit darker. about hickory is that it's used for axe handles because it, it interlocks the grain and it won't split when it's dry but when it's wet um, it actually splits pretty nice and pretty easily Okay, so you were saying earlier, this typically takes you about 15, well, 10 to 15 minutes to, to uh, do this rough cut with the axe. Uh, right? It usually takes less time working at, uh, on, a, uh, on a stump? On a stump, yeah. Okay. This, this is a little high and kind of bouncy. Right. But we'll, we'll short circuit that with uh, the bandsaw real quick. Okay. And we'll come back. Let's go to the bandsaw. All right, so we're going to use the bandsaw to get rid of a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to leave the line. So um, we're going to redraw this line in a couple of seconds, but typically we would work at a, a shave horse at camp and we work with a draw knife. Bob keeps telling me he wants to run it over a jointer and I keep telling him I'm okay. <laughs> this is the difference between a plugged and an unplugged woodworker. The guys at Spoon Camp would consider using the power tools sacrilege, but for well, the uh, video, we're going to... It's kind of uh, nice because we don't have to worry about dust collection or mm -hmm. carrying protection. Yeah, hauling heavy pieces of equipment. Uh, large, expensive power uh, considerations. Well, I think the cool thing about this is you got a certain amount of zen working with your hands, using 100-year-old tools, and creating something in a relatively short period of time. Yep, you're exactly right, and that's that's what this is. It's a 100-year-old uh, draw knife made by Fulton. Mm -hmm. um, every bit as good as the day they made it. Yeah, I think the, the real key on any of these type of tools is to just keep it nice and sharp. So, we always work with the grain direction, which means that we're constantly flipping the wood around. And working down to a level surface. So working in the shave horse, we use our feet to clamp the work uh, versus having the, the large bench and we can move a little bit quicker, but this isn't so much about how fast we can do it. Well, camp is really about, uh, like you said before, community and having a good time and being around people with kindred, uh, well, kindred spirits with uh, oh, similar interests. You know, we work to, to help each other because not everybody is at the same level. Mm -hmm. And we work uh, with people of all skill levels. We also, you know, we, we sort of teach in a very informal setting, which, you know, if you want to learn how to do it this way, you can. 
but you're not forced to. But when you see something that works better than what you're doing, maybe you can make it even a better idea. Yeah. And camp has grown tremendously, right, from when you first started? Well, when we first started, Tom and I, my partner in the camp, were coming back from an, another event, and we're sitting there going, wow, that was great. We wish it never ended. And we said, we should probably do one down by us. And he said, I, I work at a camp. I, I can ask them if they'll consider it. So um, we put the idea out there, having no idea if anybody would actually show up. And I actually had to run to Newark Airport to pick two people up who flew in. <laughs> So, um, immediately it was a hit. We were only 15 the first year. And then the second event we had 23. And this year we're already up to about 30. So, it's, it's growing leaps and bounds, but without getting too, too big, too, too fast. So now we have a rough, idea and what we'll do is we'll come back and retrace our line so the nice thing about making your own axe handle is it's your axe handle so you make it to fit whatever your hands happen to be you can make it fatter you can make it thinner thicker custom grip however you need to size it so that it fits the way that you use an axe and So it's a it's a rainy day today. The here in the Bob's wood shop. That's right. So my vice is right kind of at the end of the uh, garage door. So we're gonna risk getting wet for you viewers. So so what's next? What's next is we we're gonna get down to that line, and this is where you know there's really no substitute for a sharpened draw knife. The draw knife is a ridiculously efficient tool for getting rid of wood. The green guys call it a bandsaw on a stick. <laughs> That's the first time I heard that. thing about it is that you can get right down to that line and because these are green they cut relatively easily But if you were trying to do this in dry hickory with a draw knife, uh -huh. well, that is a joke you play on your friends that are new to Bob's wood shop. <laughs> All right. You'll have to trust me that I know where the line is on this side. Really does go fast. It's impressive. That's what happens when you get a skilled craftsman and a sharp tool together. Most people do not know that you can push on a draw knife just as easily as you can pull on one. Yeah. And then when you get it to the point where your chip can come off, you can almost use it like a fro to split that chip off. So 
So a lot of green woodworkers work in stages like turners do. And this handle isn't ready to be installed on an ax anytime soon because it's still really wet. And if I was to install it, the, uh, the head would shrink around the eye and then you get a loose ax head. So you're going to let this dry. So in wood turners turn, this is the first cut. This and is the, the roughing out phase. Right. And then you're going to let it dry and fit it to the... Yep. Uh, fit it to the axe uh, after several months. That's why I'm leaving the heads big on it like the other one. Because I don't know what axe this is for. But I know I like this shape. Well, this is a classic shape. This is a very common, probably one of the most uh, traditional shapes that you're going to see in an axe, right? Um, this pattern I actually drew off of a, uh, an old axe that was my father-in-law's. It's all, I made it a lot wider and I swelled the, the palm a little bit just because if you're swinging an axe, um, we have different grips that we use, which require different spots on the axe to be held. See how I lift up and mm -hmm. it almost acts yeah. like a fro and then at the last second it's, I can come back and make that last cut. It's impressive the precision that you're getting with this. Get that out of the way so we can see. So how long are you going to let this piece of wood dry then? Well I've got about 10 of them in the bag at home. And I probably break one or two a year, <laughs> so. But as traditional, it's usually about a year per every inch thickness, right? Yeah, you know, you can get away with a little bit less. What I do when I, uh, when I cut the tops to put the wedges in mm -hmm. is I'll leave the wedges long so I can take them out or drive them in a little bit more. But... Then, you know, when I know that it's good and dry, that's when I can go back and finally, you know, put a, a permanent wedge in. So that's step one and two. So if you look at this ax, you'll see that we tend to kind of bevel them off so that they're not nice and square. Um, they're just more comfortable that way. Oh, no and doubt. So what we do is we can take a pencil or pen or marker or whatever and just set a distance with our finger and then trace down the width of the axe. So this is the bevel line. This is one of the bevel lines. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to play a game of connect the dots in a second. Mm -hmm. If you follow the green with your finger, you get splinters. <laughs> so, no, not as much on wet wood, right? Not as much on wet wood, but they're still there. So then I'm going to shorten that a little bit. And I'm going to make a second bevel line. And now with the draw knife, with these two lines, we can go back to the vise. You said we're just going to be connecting the lines now. And connecting the lines with the draw knife. And so traditionally, this is what I think a draw knife is for. Uh, more of the angle cut versus the flat cut. So I've certainly learned something today. Uh, we good? Yep. Okay. So... You know, wood has grain direction, and one of the things you learn as a spoon carver is that if it's difficult, most likely you're going in the wrong direction. So if I try to pull on this side, you can see that's the correct direction. It's coming off like butter. But if I try to pull on this side, 
you can see how it stops the knife. Yeah. And that's because the grain direction changes. So I have to connect the dots from either side. And we'll go back and forth. But by the way, if you're a turner, it's the exact same thing. We're, get, we're going to the bottom of a cove, we stop. Going to the other side of a cove, we get to there and we stop. And Bob said, what is this going to take, about an hour? And I thought, no, no, usually 20 minutes, give or take. Depends on how much we're yapping about it. <laughs> to the bottom of that cove and stop. I remember years ago you told me that the guys that are working the froze can really make shingles very quickly. And uh, this is an illustration of how quickly a sharp knife will go through fresh wood. So because this draw knife is too wide to swing through that cut, uh, what I would normally do in the shop is just clean that up. But I'm going to have to be better with the knife today. So one of the things that you know we know as greenwood guys is you can always go across the grain safely. So coming down on this side here. Love that sound. And all I'm doing is taking it down to this line on the end here that we drew. Yep. And then we'll stop and flip this over. So tell us a little bit more about Spoon Camp and, and the types of people that show up. We have all variety of people. Um, I was joking before, take the Newark Airport stop uh, to pick up our inbound dignitaries from California and Texas. Um, I have room for one more on the truck. <laughs> and. Uh, we get people driving up from the Baltimore area. Uh, Riley comes in from Ohio. But these are all professions, right? Everybody's into this. No, nobody's a professional. Oh, really? Okay. We have uh, an eclectic community of... You mean, you mean there's not professional spoon carvers? There, no, I'm, we I'm might talking... get one or two this go around. We have uh, a guy coming from... Western New York, that that's what he does for a living. So the professions that people have that are coming to camp fall into what categories? Uh, it's all variety of stuff. We have uh, IT guys. Um, I think there's a couple of lawyers in there. IT guys love this stuff. We have a bunch of IT guys in our wood turner club. It's... Uh, it's a mishmash. Uh, occupational therapists, uh, professional spoon makers, or guys who make their living, you know, make, making spoons and selling spoons. Um, we have guys that work for tooling companies. It, it is really a mix of people. Um, and, you know, we enjoy them all because we don't really worry about what you do outside of the camp. Okay. Well, the main thing is you're with kindred spirits, right? And you're having a blast as you're, as you're doing this. You're, you're carving, you're joking, you're, you're eating, you're having fun, you're playing music. Yeah, we have just a really good time hanging out together. And it's, you know, it's meant to be about having kind of a connection to other people in the community mm -hmm. yeah. um well, it's, a know. it's a type of retreat yeah exactly and you know a lot of the events that are being organized are you know they're um, being organized to kind of make money and all of that and 
The only money we actually try to collect is for the camp itself for giving us use of the facilities for three or four days at no cost. Mm -hmm. So. But so you make a donation to them? We do, yeah. We've raised a couple hundred dollars each of the last two events. And, you know, for now, this, this piece is as good as done. You know, if I was in the shop and I had a knife, I'd probably clean that up and clean that up a little bit. Some of these transitions. But, you know, this, this is a, a decent sized camp axe handle. And, you know, more than enough meat up here to hang any, you know, up to probably two or three pound head on. So, but that's that, you know. So that's ready to get into the uh, drying rack? In the bag. You put it in the bag like you do with a bowl. I put it in a bag just like I do with a bowl. Right? Oh, okay, cool. So that's so that's it for this uh, episode. That is. Any uh, closing remarks? Yeah. So you know, in counting the rings on the other one that I made the other day, um, what would you say that is? Two, two and a half inches, maybe. Yep. Um, so the other one I made the other day, I counted fifty rings in it. So you know, fifty years. Uh, it took to make this accent mm -hmm. <laughs> or you know, 50 years and 15 minutes on Bob's Bob wood shop. Good. Well, that's pretty cool, Steve. Thanks for coming over today. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to coming to uh, spoon camp this year. Yeah. We're looking forward to having a videographer. Yeah. So I'll see you in three weeks. Very good. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming over today, Steve. It was always a lot of fun hanging out with you. And if you want to find more out about spoon camp, check out their web address which is here and here are the dates and where it's located in west milford new jersey so you guys know the drill if you like my content please like comment and subscribe and thanks for watching